Well, this morning we are looking at um, God's gift exchange to us. And there's three things that God gives to us if we participate in God's gift exchange. And so we'll be looking at the first one. If we give God our worry, he will give us peace. Next week, we will be looking at if we give God our hurts, he will give us healing. And then on the third week, if we give God our grief, God will give us joy. How many of you know what a, a white elephant gift exchange is? <laughs> you know, I didn't know this, but there are, there are websites that have rules. I mean, they're very specific rules. Of course, a white elephant gift exchange can be very cutthroat <laughs> among the participants. Uh, but there are several websites that spell out the rules that you're supposed to supposed to uh, follow when you do it. And I and I know most of you have heard of them and and probably participated in them. And it's where you take a useless gift, like our lighter thing that works sometimes. <laughs> this would be a perfect white elephant gift. And you you or you buy a a, a, gag, a gag gift or a funny gift to exchange at a party and and you wrap them up and you don't know what you're getting and you put them on a table or under a tree or um, and you draw numbers or rock paper scissors or whatever and you go and you you pick up the, the gift, and if someone else likes the gift that you got, unlikely, but it happens, they're able to go and grab that gift from you, and it, it, it gets really, uh, really fun and, and complicated. But overall, the gifts are usually something that you'll probably not use, or it's something you're going to stick in the closet and you're going to re-gift it for next year's Christmas. Well, today we are looking at things, giving things that, that hurt us or, or slow us down or just keep us from being the people God wants us to be. See, God wants us to be in his grace, and it's so easy for us to get focused on other things. But as we give things back to God, God says he will give us something in exchange. And so this week, if we give God our worry, he will give you his peace. And so today, as we look at God's gift exchange, it's about all the exchanges that take place in our relationship with God You know, this time of year is, is, the song says it's the most wonderful time of the year, but it, it's also one of the most stressful. There, there's so much happening. There's so many things to be done. There's so many things that we, we want to get done and, and we want to do right and, and get perfect and, and, and make everybody happy and satisfy everybody. And so it adds to a lot of stress, and we, we lose our focus, we, we develop a bad attitude, and, it, and it's all because of 
worry or a variation of it. You know, we're so busy, so we, we ask ourselves, how am I going to, to fit it all in? Or we're so overextended, we ask, how are we going to pay for it all? Or during this time of the year, we are reminded of our deepest hurts, so we ask, how can I just get through this season? And as we're thinking, how can I just get through Christmas and all that I have to get done and, and do, we begin to worry. We overthink. You're thinking, what do I have to get done? All, 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 all that I have to get done, all I have to do. And we worry that it's not going to happen. <coughs> and then life and the things we do and the things we have to do, how are we going to get it all done? And you start to worry and you think, you're worrying and 99% of the things that we worry about never happen, never come true. But yet the Bible addresses it because God is the one who made us and he knows that there are things that bother us the most, and one of them is worry. And Jesus addresses worry point blank, head on, in one of the most important sermons ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount. So it's a very important topic when it comes to our relationships with God. Don't be worrying, don't be anxious. Now, one caution, something to clear up. There is a, there, there is a difference between worry and caution. We, we should be wary, we should be aware of dangerous situations. And there's a difference between worry and wisdom. See, being conservative in your decision making doesn't mean you are worried. It just might mean that you're wise, that you're being cautious. And another explanation is there are certain kinds of anxiety that have to do with the traumas that we have been through in life. Or perhaps a struggle with, with depression or sadness. And we are talking about a kind of worry A worry of our own making that is about things that have not happened. So let's define worry. Worry is, your, is allowing your mind to dwell or to think on potentially negative outcomes beyond our actual control. What if I go on a trip and get hit by a car? It's out of our control. Why, why worry about it? And it may not happen anyways. But worry is allowing your mind to think on potentially negative outcomes beyond our actual control. And Jesus addressed it this way. We see it in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food or your body more 
than clothing. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will, we, what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteous, righteously. And he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. See, Jesus says several things here about worry. And the first thing he says is worry is unnatural. Nature does not worry. Verses 25 through 28. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable than, to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. So worry is unnatural. Nature doesn't worry. The second thing that that Jesus tells us here, worry is unhelpful. It doesn't actually change anything. Worry doesn't change a thing. Verse 27. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Great question. The philosophical question. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? The truth is something different we'll see in a moment. Worry is unhelpful. It doesn't change a thing. And the third thing that Jesus tells us is worry is contrary to the will of God. It reflects a lack of faith. Verses 31 through 34. So don't worry about these things. Food, drink, clothing. Don't worry about these things. Saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteous, righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So how do we give God your worry and experience his peace? That's why we're calling this God's gift exchange, because we give God our worry, and he gives a gift to us. The first thing we need to do to give God our worry and experience his peace is to let Jesus be king, lord, master, leader of your life. 
Ask yourself this question. Who or what should be the thing I think about the most? What should be first in my thought life? The hint is, if you don't know it, it's Jesus. And when you put Jesus' kingdom first and you make God's kingdom purposes your primary concern or focus, you don't have to worry about a lot of other things in your life. The second thing is, is we need to live a day at a time. Live this day only. Verse 34. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. See, God gives you enough power and enough strength for today but not for tomorrow. He doesn't equip you. He doesn't give you power to prevent all future situations. You don't have the power for all the future situations that you are going to go through. He gives you strength to deal with what comes today. And the third thing is, is we need to lean on the faithfulness of God. That is, we need to talk to God about it. And we need to let God remind you of his promises which of course means studying his promises regularly. Verses 32 and 33. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Paul said the same thing over in Philippians in verse 6, 4, 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. There are two things that Paul says we are to do with worry. The first thing is, is we're to tell God about it. We are to take it to him in prayer. And then he says, don't worry about anything. And tell God what you need. And then the second thing that Paul says we are to do is we are to thank God for what he has done. See, gratitude, thankfulness, appreciation refocuses our minds on the goodness and the gifts of God rather than the problems around us. And Paul says this is the result in verse 7 of Philippians. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. See, we have a choice. Everybody has a choice. Are you walking around with an attitude of gratitude? Or are you walking around with doom and gloom like a, like a dark cloud is, is hanging over you, dropping rain on you all the time? You can sit and think on your problems, or you can, you can sit and think on God's promises. Here's what we need to live 
by every day because Jesus tells us not to worry. Because he promises to meet all our needs. So why worry? God's going to meet your needs. The Bible said it first. But science backs up the Bible in some cases. See, the Bible said it first, but we now, we now know that worry may damage your health. It may disrupt how you live your life. It can and does negatively affect the way you treat others. And it reduces your ability to trust in God. So Jesus gives us the solution. This is the solution on how, how to stop worry in our lives. I'm not saying that it's always easy, but if you do it day by day, it will become part of our lives. It will become a habit that cannot be shaken. And what we need to do is what it says in verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. This means we need to put God first in our lives. It means we need to fill our thoughts with things that he wants us to do, as found in the Bible. And then we need to serve and obey him in everything. What's really important to you? Is it people or objects or goals? Or is it other things? All of these things compete for priority. And any of these things be can become more important to you if you don't actively choose to give God first place in, er in every area of your life. See, the Life Application Bible says this, Planning for tomorrow is time well spent. Worrying about tomorrow is time wasted. Sometimes it's difficult to tell the difference. When you let Jesus be King, Lord, Master, Leader in your life and live one day at a time, and lean on God's faithfulness, he will guard your heart and your mind with peace. Don't let your worries today and about tomorrow interfere with God's plan for your life. Give your worries to God. And he promises that he will give us so many things in return. Most of all, he will replace worry with peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 93. Would you please stand? Hark the herald angels sing, number 93.